now going to go into the botanical gardens of Kuala Lumpur. The park area, which I've got to say to you, is worth visiting and will take almost a day to go around if you're seeing everything. It is beautiful. There are many, many beautiful things in this botanical garden. Not only the beautiful women, but the beautiful plants and the beautiful people. It is a stunning place. But do you remember that before we started to populate Malaysia, before the humans came, the whole country was almost a botanical garden. It was only the humans that had to create places to show what it was like prior to human species destroying. There are tropical forests all the way over Malaysia but much of it has now been torn down for farming, agriculture and of course the housing of the human species. Just below me is a beautiful lizard. There she is. Beautiful. Not a lot of wildlife that I've seen in the park so far, but this beautiful creature seems to be living here very happily. It doesn't seem to be disturbed by me at all.
for children. Learning, living, loving nature. Something we should all do. This is a good name for a children's playground. Fantasy Planet. The thing is that we all live in fantasy in our modern world with our skyscrapers and concrete, glass. It is simply, even in this botanical garden, fantasy to think that we can survive without stopping consumerism. Even if the consumerism is carbon neutral, environmentally neutral, it never actually is. This reminds me a little bit like Central Park in New York. You've got a park in the middle of a massive city in which every part of the city outside the park is consuming and consuming. Here you see the most tallest buildings, some of them, on their entire planet. Yet to keep one of these apartments blocks for a day, if you simply put a skip outside and said, let me see what's coming out and let's see what's coming in on a daily basis, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you would be amazed. That's why I always say to people, Keep all of your waste at home and don't throw anything away for a couple of weeks. And see how much waste after two weeks at your own home you have. Also, look at everything that's coming into it. Then try to understand where it all comes from. Where does the things that I purchase come from around the world? What has got to happen right the way down to mining of those goods to be able to produce those goods, to bring them in your home and then for them to become trash in which you're throwing away. The process is killing every single part of the planet whether it's the rivers, streams, estuaries, or the sea, or even the toppest point of the mountains, right down to the South and North Pole, that are slowly melting away. Ask yourself another question, and I'm talking in many countries of the world, where when you were a child, the river used to flood. I remember, from my childhood, every year the river would flood. I can't remember the last time it ever did flood, at least not in the last 10 years. Then I look back in history of the floods and they've always occurred. For hundreds of years prior, suddenly, they've stopped. Doesn't that make you wake up and think, why? As a child, I remember how many birds there was, how many wild animals, how many fish were in our local river. The only thing that looks like a fish in our local river now is a turd floating down, flushed out from someone's house. Is that how you want to live? And how you want to give this planet, this beautiful planet, 
to your children, to your grandchildren, to your great-grandchildren. Because by the time they've inherited the earth, they have inherited a living nightmare that you've caused because you fought, but they needed that plastic doll. You fought, but they needed 25 pairs of shoes. You fought, but it was all right to go and buy them a birthday present with the packaging being four times more than the actual present itself. Then ask yourself how interested they were in the present you gave them a year afterwards. They wouldn't even remember. Look at this tree. Look at this natural beauty. Our planet was covered with these trees or trees like them plants like them and slowly they've disappeared we are burning our rainforests we are cutting down the forests even in a country like Romania is having thousands of acres destroyed on a yearly basis illegally for greed now you consider oh yes everything's all right but actually, our oceans are almost dead. Did you know that there is over 3 million fishing boats across the world? 3 million. They kill literally hundreds of thousands of innocent turtles, whales and sharks every year seemingly almost for fun to produce you the fish or something you like to eat eight billion people on our planet today that is twice what it was 50 years ago you imagine in 50 years doubling to 16 billion wake up see the roses Go back to the land, get yourself a little small holding, which will cost you nothing, depending where you are. Grow your own food and enjoy living. Smell the roses of life. Let me take you around the rest of this beautiful garden.
on this tree I saw my first insect a bee a large bee that was my very first insect to see There are a few birds in this park and a few lizards unlike the actual city itself where you're unlikely to see anything I'm going to go to these flowers and see if I can see a butterfly or an insect There are a few small bees and creatures but virtually none I can hover over here and not catch the sight of virtually any there is a very nice pond in front of me I'm hoping to see some ducks, some geese some other wild fowl but of course the main thing I see is massive high-rise offices apartments dominate the landscape housing in the end parts of the billions of people of the world we need to think about bringing more children into this world or if we are going to bring children into this world they've got to be well educated to the environment I'm hoping that there'll be fish, at least, here. And yes, there are fish, and there are beautiful lizards. Another one here in front of me. Off into the water. There she swims. And I can see groups of fish, but no birds, no ducks, no geese. But in the murky water, I can see shoals of fishes. And as I turn to look at what man has made, I realize that in this botanical garden, there are less people than I saw earlier on in H&M in one of the shopping centres. Even the humans have turned their back on coming to see the wildlife, the turtles, the water monitors and everything else that you can see here if you look. But of course is there anything that I can buy? No. Then I simply don't want to come. Is there any shops? No. Is there restaurants? No. Is there any anything in which I can spend my money on and destroy our planet? No. 
then I'm sorry. The botanical gardens sound nice, but they're not for me. After all, why would a child want to come along and see turtles? Beautiful turtles and beautiful fish. No interest at all. I decided to feed them one biscuit just to see what would happen. Wait for it. Here they go. One biscuit for a bunch of fish. Well, in no time, the biscuit has gone. After all, there are thousands of fishes here. And then a turtle comes up to see what's happening. One turtle in amongst hundreds of fishes. 